This is Echo 3, and let's discuss lithobraking. In the summer of 2003, NASA sent two rovers towards the Red Planet. Spirit was launched first, and the record-breaking opportunity was launched about a month later. Spirit rode to space aboard a Delta II, and Opportunity on a Delta II Heavy. Due to the scale of the Kerbal system, we don't need anything that extravagant to get into orbit. Both Spirit and Opportunity were part of the Mars Exploration Rover program. The planned mission duration was about 92 days. Both rovers would go on to last far longer than expected. Spirit lasted 2,269 days, and Opportunity lasted a whopping 5,250 days on the surface of Mars. Spirit left Earth on the 10th of June, 2003, an opportunity on the 7th of July 2003. Both rovers would end up landing on Mars in January of 2004. Spirit landed on the 4th of January and opportunity on the 25th. In my game, I do not have a reconnaissance orbiter around Duna, so I will be leaving part of the spacecraft in orbit around Duna so that I can maintain contact back to Kerbin. Since I will be putting the craft in orbit around Duna first, this means I will not be trying to land coming at interplanetary speeds. I am using the new maneuver tools that were added to the game as far as 1.12 is concerned, and it makes interplanetary missions a lot easier. In the bottom left of my screen, I am using the maneuver editor down there. It just makes getting precise maneuvers a little easier. This is part of the stock game. So I'm making a small mid-course correction burn so I can put the orbiter in the exact orbit that I want. So I'm wanting to come in equatorial around Duna and then have my craft arrow break using Duna's atmosphere to slow down and that'll help me save Delta V to get into orbit. I do have a tutorial where I go into more details about using arrow braking around different planets, but Duna is a great place to try arrow braking if you're wanting to use that to get into orbit. The red part on my orbital lines is not stock, that's part of the mod trajectories. It does make calculating future maneuvers going through the atmosphere a lot easier. It also makes calculating landings a lot easier, so if you have a computer and access to mods, I would recommend it. It's very useful. At our apoapsis, we will go ahead and set up a maneuver to get our orbiter into the correct orbit that we want around Duna, but I'm also going to separate the lander section because it is already on a suborbital trajectory and it will be able to land on the light side of Duna in a pretty good location for us. Now you are probably looking at this landing section and thinking it looks really weird, and you are correct. We have a tetrahedron covered with the inflatable heat shields. So the idea with this is these heat shields will inflate and I'm going to use them as a kind of airbag to help the rover slow down and bounce safely to a landing on our red planet. Now if you're thinking this idea sounds kind of crazy, it isn't. NASA really did this. This is how they landed the Spirit and Opportunity rovers on Mars. Now they were coming from interplanetary speeds, so they had a heat shield and some retro rockets that helped them slow down initially. They also had a drogue chute that would deploy and help the crafts slow down to some reasonable speeds. But as far as the landing is concerned, it was just a bunch of airbags around a tetrahedron box that contained the rovers. So I'm using these inflatable heat shields because there's no airbags in the stock game. I did some research and I couldn't find any mods that add anything like this, so if you know of a modification for the game that would add airbags or some other cool litho-breaking technologies, I would be grateful and I'd love to try adding them to my game, but I don't know of any currently. NASA put out a pretty cool animation of what they thought the landings would look like. Obviously there's no actual footage of it, but I'm going to put a link to the animation that you can check out in the video description. So on our lander, we have the drogue chutes deployed. Hopefully this will slow us down just a little bit so we won't crash quite so hard. But after that, we're not using any kind of retro rockets or anything fancy. We're just going to let these cushions do their job and see if we can roll and come to a safe stop. Well, it looks like the rover is staying protected in there so far. And it's handy that they're blowing up. I won't have to worry about deflating them or getting rid of them. So our rover, just like Spirit and Opportunity, is in this 
tetrahedron box thing that it will need to unfold so that the rover can get out. And this is very similar to how Spirit and Opportunity unpacked themselves in order to drive off. These hinges are part of the Breaking Ground DLC, so one of the cool things you can do with them is land like Spirit and Opportunity did. And it looks like our rover is completely intact and safely lithobraked onto the surface of Duna. So that's pretty cool. The real rovers had a lot more unfolding that they had to do with their solar panels and everything, so I made a little bit more simple version than NASA did but ours did fit in our lander, and I think we can safely decouple and drive off. Eventually, the sand and dust storms put the two rovers out of commission. Our rover really only has to worry about my driving. So we are ready to explore Duna and break some records. I would love to hear what some of your favorite missions are, and if you have any recommendations for future content, please leave them in the comments below. I am Echo3, and thanks for joining me on this discussion about litho breaking. I will see you next time.